I miss all of the boot lid badge bragging. Back in the 80s and 90s, you knew exactly which of the latest engine technologies a car had just by looking at the letters on the back. I for injection, ooh. 16V for 16 valve, ooh again. T for turbo, double ooh, etc. etc. Some car makers then went a bit bonkers and started adding badging to show what other technology the car had on board, like the Vauxhall Cavalier had an ABS badge in the early 90s to show it had anti-lock brakes. Regular stuff now, but it was cutting edge stuff back then. Worth boasting about. 90s Volvos had a Lambda Sond badge to brag about the catalytic converter or SIPs for side impact protection system. And then there was the badge that spelled out turbo intercooler on the boot of the 740, which was, well, it's cool. In the future though, when cars become predominantly electric here in Europe, what's gonna happen to badging? How will you brag about your car having the latest technology? How do you show off as battery technology improves? And while we're on the subject, what is the point of buying an electric car now when it uses one type of battery technology if we know that in the future, there's gonna be something even better? It's definitely worth talking about. One of the things I hear a lot from people is that they're not gonna buy an EV now because the battery technology will improve suddenly and then they'll be stuck with an outdated battery and an outdated car. Should we be waiting for the better tech with the better badges? Let's look at it. There's been a lot of announcements in recent weeks and months from the big car companies showing that not all batteries and associated technologies are created equal. Yeah, electrons will still be flowing and yes, the sensation when you put your foot down will be on the face of it, pretty much identical across most EVs. But there are clear signs that we could be geeking out over things like cathode compositions or voltage levels or wireless electric motors and two-speed gearboxes in exactly the same way that people got excited about fuel injection, 16 valves and turbos way back in the day. And that's because there's never just gonna be one electric drivetrain. This is the car industry and brands will always be looking for an edge. A lot of that will be around performance because let's face it, everybody likes performance. That's a big grabber but there are other areas to improve. There's a whole lot of frantic work going on right now to reduce charge times, increase range, reduce weight, again, circling back to performance, slashing the cost and cutting the exposure to any material that's either hard to get hold of or causes a whole load of environmental and ethical issues to extract. Looking at you, Cobalt. On the subject of badge bragging, if you boil all of that down to a load of symbols and acronyms, you could fill an entire boot lid. But what's maybe more interesting is that it gives us a lot of choice in the type of electric battery and type of electric car that we go for. And it's not just a question of waiting for the best, it's more a question of waiting for the one that suits you the best. So what are we gonna see? Let's start with battery chemistries. Everybody right now is using lithium ion and mostly they're gonna continue to do that for the foreseeable future, but not all lithium ion batteries are created equally. Here's a bit of science for you. Batteries work when electrons flow from the anode to the cathode, creating electricity. The anode dictates the charging and the cathode dictates the range and the cost of the cell. So it's the cathode that's the tricky bit. That's what gives you your capacity, which in turn gives you your range. I'm not gonna to get too geeky in explaining that to you today, but the cathode is so important that lithium ion batteries are named for the materials the cathode is made of. So there's NMC cathodes, which is made of nickel, manganese, and cobalt. That's what we mainly use today. But most car makers wanna reduce the cobalt because that's the stuff that's mined by children in the Congo. All right, not all of it, but it's tricky stuff to get hold of. Tesla wanna to move to a high nickel content and dump the cobalt as well. VW Group wanna dump cobalt, specifically for lower range and mid range batteries. For entry level EVs, both VW and Stellantis, that's Peugeot, Fiat, Alpha, etc., are moving to a chemistry called LFP, lithium ion phosphate, which dumps cobalt and manganese to make a cheaper battery that's more environmentally friendly and easier to charge. It doesn't have quite as much range but having an LFP badge on your boot lid isn't necessarily a bad thing. It might let you brag about having an environmentally friendlier EV. There's gonna be levels to smugness here. 
NMC, that's nickel, manganese and cobalt, remember, will power the high-end battery cars, partly because it offers longer range, but the C in NMC isn't great, so your fancy Taycan might not let you feel quite as smug as a Peugeot. Having said that, Porsche, for example, are working with a small-scale producer of performance, high-energy cathode-active NMC batteries for race cars and high-performance road cars. Ethically sourced as well. They say their cobalt comes from Germany. So maybe you'll have a badge for that. NMC Plus maybe, for sportiness and smugness. Although it'll probably cost you. And beyond that, there's Solid State, arriving around 2025, probably for high-end, low-volume cars initially. And that does away with the anode material to improve density and reduce charge time. VW reckon that, for example, charging to add 280 miles of range, that's from London to Newcastle, if you want to visualize it, takes 28 minutes now for an ID4 on a rapid charge, but that's going to drop to 12 minutes with solid state. Makes you think, what are VW going to use as an acronym for solid state on the back of their cars? S? No, never mind. What other badging can we cram on there? How about two speed for the gearbox? Most EVs are single speed because they've got enough torque low down and don't need additional gearing. But if you want speeds of today's high performance internal combustion engine cars, you probably need more gears. The Porsche Taycan, for example, has a two speed gearbox to allow it to reach a maximum top speed in excess of 160 miles an hour. Sticking with the Taycan for a moment, this was the car that also introduced us to 800 volt electrical systems instead of 400 volt. Higher voltage is good for charging, so it's quicker at cramming all those ions back into the anode. You can kind of compare it to water flow, so higher voltage gives you more pressure. And other manufacturers have switched to 800 volt too. Hyundai for the Ionic 5 and Kia for the EV6. Maybe we'll have 800 V on the backs of cars pretty soon. And there's more. How about e-motors? that replace permanent magnets and their expensive rare earth materials in favor of a non-magnetized motor that conducts power wirelessly. Nope, I don't understand it either, but there is a German company called Mahler that's developed it and apparently it's on the way and we might get badges to show it off. Okay, I don't know if you'll have all of this spelled out on a badge on your boot, but who knows, maybe you will. I mean, how else are you going to get consumers to acknowledge why one product is greener or more powerful or better value or smarter than another? What it shows is that the race to be better, to build it faster, smarter and more energy efficient or better for the planet or just plain sexier, isn't just going to fizzle out in the electric era. No chance. And it also shows us something else. This is interesting. Anyone who's waiting for batteries to get better before they buy and are equating better with more range might have it all wrong. Better means a lot of things. Look at the Taycan Turbo. It's not actually a turbo, is it? Despite the badge. That's Porsche's way of showing why that version is superior to another. So maybe we'll get to see all the different types of better with some very interesting badges in the not too distant future. All right, guys, that's all from me for now. If you enjoy this video, then leave me a comment down below ask any questions or leave me any comments. And as always, if you liked, then hit like. If you want to subscribe, hit subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.